All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to our virtual DePaul uh, Capstone Showcase. Uh, again, we're doing an online virtual Capstone Showcase for the class of 2020, and we're gonna see a whole bunch of cool projects here today. Can't wait to see them all. Uh, again, I'd like to congratulate all the seniors today uh, graduating this weekend. Again, you made it all the way through, congratulations. And again, to all the students that are basically being a part of this pro uh, project, thank you very much for joining on this. Uh, I would also like to give a shout out to JDE, which is helping put all this stuff together. So if you see them, please thank him. I'd like to give a shout out to Grayson Ducker, to Kaylee Mitchell and Eric Mullen. They've been doing a whole bunch of help here. Also Dave as well. You've been unbelievably helpful in this whole situation. So without further ado, let's get to our first uh, capstone project. We, the first project that we have up to, on deck is Hoverboy. Let's go meet the rest of the crew. All right, I think we got everything set up. Let's meet the Hoverboy crew. Go ahead and bring them in. Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing them. I got moved. Hey, Will, how are you? Uh, hey, good. everybody, how's it going? What's up? Hello, we're good. Hello. Awesome, awesome. All right, you guys ready to talk about Hoverboy? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. let's uh, play the trailer, let the audience see it, and then we'll, let's discuss. Sounds good. Amazing. Great. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Tell me about Hoverboy. All righty. Um, so we are the team behind Hoverboy. My name is Josh Eckhart. I was the producer on the game, and um, I'll just let everyone do themselves. So we'll hop over to Alec next. Awesome. Uh, my name is Alec. I worked on some of the UI and some background programming stuff and then like minor gameplay tweaks for this project as well. Might as well just popcorn into people. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jake? All right, I'm Jake. I worked on sound design as well as uh, logo art and menu art. And, uh, oh, oh, oh my bad, bro. No, go ahead. No, I was, I was just passing it to you. Uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I'm Matthew Lopez. I am a level designer for the game, and I also did a lot of texture work for most of the ramps that are in the game. Um, yeah, so Jonathan, your turn. Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Russell. I mostly served as design and environmental assets. And uh, popcorn over to Scott. No, all right. My name is Scott Jonsky, and I worked on the music and the visual effects, such as like sparks, particles, and other things in there. Um, and then hop it over to DeMarco. Hey, I'm DeMarco. I worked on the character as well as the uh, rigs for the character. Uh, I did a lot of the concept art and I UV mapped a lot of the props that were made. And I think that's everybody that um, is here. Uh, Aiden was also a part of the team and Aiden worked on a, was our art lead and uh, did a lot of work within uh, the textures and a lot of the models and was just kind of like a 
a person who we would approach with uh, artistic questions and he worked a lot like in engine so he handled a lot of like the technical art is and that tyler everybody am i well. missing anyone and tyler uh tyler oh, tyler, so, tyler yes. was the other level designer um for the game he's currently not here right now though he worked on the spline mesh like with the grinding and he helped with a lot of the level design layouts and took uh, did like a lot of the design work for our game awesome. and that's everyone awesome okay wow uh so again uh love the look of the game a big uh skate uh skateboarding fan myself like tony Hawk pro skater love that game growing up get a lot of vibes from here so again what made you guys want to make hoverboy um well actually the original idea is one of our friends brandon heslow he was like in the first quarter of the game he had to kind of um he had to leave for the second quarter of the game so we didn't have him as a like the head programmer but his idea for hoverboy is something like more of like his baby his dream project that he wanted to always do so we're like yeah let's totally do it let's make a game where you're a guy on a skateboard shooting people and it'd be super cool um so, so yeah so it was his original idea yeah it seems like uh what do you call it skate mixed with like super hot it feels like to me oh yeah definitely, definitely. yeah awesome. that's a lot of our inspiration going into it oh very cool all right uh any more things you want to talk about the design of this game um, um, so, of, like, level design. yeah uh yeah so yeah we originally had other levels planned at the time but due to like a lot of the things happening we had to like scale back and like just oh, try to make the polished skate park overall um so with that being said uh in terms of like designing level for me i can't really speak for tyler when i was doing level stuff i kind of thought about other skate games that i've played in the past like tony hawk that you mentioned um jet said radio future is also a big influence for me oh very nice in terms of uh design and then the way i really tackled it in terms of all the grind splines being connected to ramps, I thought about it more as a fighting game, as weird as that sounds. But in terms of that, I meant, like, in fighting games, you have strings, so those combos lead into other actions as soon as you do the button presses. So I was like, why don't we treat the skate park like that? From You can start on a ramp, and then you can either choose to go on the sp uh, grind spline that's in front of you, or you could just jump off of it and then continue on your way. I just wanted the uh, players to have the choice of either continue a combo, or try to find something new um, within it. So, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Anybody else want to uh, jump in on that? Otherwise, uh, oh, uh, otherwise uh, the art in here. I'm liking. I'm liking the art is here as well. So, um, I've heard Jet Set Radio. I remember that game from way back. So, I'm seeing that you're trying to aim towards that art style, or anything else you'd like to expand upon that. Um, the, the shader we were trying to go for is definitely heavily inspired by Jet Set. We really wanted that cartoony feel to the game over something like really realistic, more like Tony Hawk. So nice. Jet Set was like the, the biggest influence, I think, on our game. And I think we, we kind of did that justice with what we turned out with. Wow, it's looking great. Mm -hmm. uh, decided to see where this would go. Uh, so what was the most like difficult parts of this project to try to get working? I mean, obviously getting the skateboard to actually feel good had to be tough. Yeah, honestly, just exactly what you said. Skating games are very difficult to make in 3D, we found out. Um, especially with the camera and just, like, boosting and momentum. A lot of UV work had to be done to make sure we didn't clip through everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I'm sure everyone here has something that they could say is, like, was really difficult. It was, like, the big problematic thing for the game. I mean, you kind of touched on it. Those colliders, man, were <laughs> a real pain in the butt. Just getting the right shapes, like, nothing could be too aggressively, um, like, angled, and everything had to sort of flow within to itself. So, like, designing the skate park was a lot of, like, we had these cool objects that we wanted to work, but <laughs> the weird shapes made it so that the boy was not very happy with them. <laughs> So instead, we had to sort of move stuff around a lot to make it flow a lot better, um, which I feel ends up working pretty well in the final game. Very nice. Awesome. Anything else you guys want to add to that? Sure. Uh, I guess from an artistic standpoint, um, a lot of us artists had a lot of different visions uh, going forward yeah. with the game. And I, I think it kind of shows with like a lot of our concept art and just kind of like uh, the end result of a lot of our art. And I think that's just something that like a lot of 
um, teams will find themselves strug struggling with is just maintaining like a consistent art style and sticking mm -hmm. to like a color palette and stuff. But uh, overall, I'm really happy with the amount of work that was completed. Um, all our artists did a really good job uh, whipping out assets and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with how that ended up. Yeah, um, for our audience out there, again, amazing stuff. They, they, these guys had to get this stuff done in about 20 weeks, which is not very, not very easy to do. Yeah, we also had to use the new lightweight render pipeline for some of the really cool effects that Scott had made, and that didn't have a whole lot of new documentation on it, so that I think was a challenge too. Absolutely, and it was it was also in preview, so <laughs> it's still technically in beta in our version of Unity, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen the systems. They look very cool. But, yeah, anything in basically in more or less in beta can definitely be hard to deal with. But it's looking great, guys. Yeah. The only last thing I would add to that is uh, this is just kind of a thing with most games, but uh, scope was a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> um, like it always is. Cause, yeah. Because I know... Um, a lot of us made some things that uh, didn't up, end up getting into the game just because we had to uh, bring down the scope a good bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely one problem there in terms of level design was the splines in the game. Um, splines aren't really native to Unity. So we had to like find a third party like asset pack that um, dealt with the splines. And Tyler, unfortunately, again, isn't here, but he's the one who kind of worked with the uh, developer who was working on the splines for Unity and was able to get those um, uh, working uh, well enough for us to put it in the game. And then you can see it in the trailer that the splines do work really well. So, Oh, we got a uh, question for you guys. If you... Oh, for sure. Uh, so it looks like we have a question. Uh, uh, why did they choose a robot for their main character? Why not a human? So what was the inspiration about doing a robot? Um, I think humans were considered. We were actually going to have human enemies at the start of the production, but we kind of thought about it and we were thinking we could do so many more cool things with a robot. Like, at, at some point in the trailer, you can see one of the trick moves that the boy does. He kind of, like, spins around and his body detaches, and you can't really do that. You can't <laughs> detach a torso of a human. Not um, quite a bit of pain. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And we, we think that really adds um, a unique factor to the game, and it makes it stand out from all other, like, racing and skating games that were not just, like, a human guy on a skateboard or a little robot boy on a skateboard. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, if I could expand upon that, I think um, a lot of our, our decision to make him a robot was influenced by the moves that we wanted him to have, like the little spinning uh, torso trick that he does, but we also liked the thematic idea of him being stuck on... A hoverboard so you know the kind of meta lore of our game is that he physically cannot get off this hoverboard because he's magnetically <laughs> attached to it so i like it i like it well done. going off of what people are saying in the chat um definitely we consider robots as well because the age rating uh, we wanted this game to be playable for a lot of a lot more people and then we felt that if we went for a human we'd have to restrict the audience a little bit so definitely Absolutely. when you guys are saying you can keep the age rating lower with killing robots. <laughs> are absolutely correct. Hundred percent. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so, future of this game. So, where do you see this game going? Do you guys plan on working this uh, after graduation? Um, I think Alec put it best. Um, so I'll <laughs> let Alec take that question. Uh, if someone wants to pay us to do so, we would love to keep working on this project. <laughs> absolutely. So again, just like anything else, again the. Uh, on to, on, to, on to more things after this. Absolutely. Yeah. Got tons of side projects mm -hmm. on the pipeline that we're looking forward to working on. Oh, beautiful. So where could someone uh, download this game and actually play around with this uh, park? Um, I have an itch page that we are going to be putting that on, but it's also going to be on the website for the DePaul Capstone Group. All right. By all... So awesome. check it out. Awesome. Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to add? Oh, uh, we got one more question. Uh, besides Collision, what were some of the hardest art problems that you had to solve for this game? Ooh. Um, I guess, well, I have a, I have a specific one that kind of pertains to me. Um, so I took a uh, character rigging class um, about like a few semesters ago. And so this is the first time I've had to create like a 
fully functioning um, like character rig like meant for games, and I had to do this with like the player character and the enemy. Um, it was definitely like a very challenging thing to deal with because when I handed it over to the animator, uh, it was very hard to animate with, and I had to keep making changes to it until it was something that he was comfortable with. And so that was just kind of a an interesting challenge that I had to go through. Is I had to learn a lot about like uh, what is acceptable in like a rig and passing it along to an animator. Um, so if you have, especially like um, with the kind of character we made, absolutely. What was so that? if you have advice for basically future developers out here, what would you recommend if you had to do it over again? Uh, what would you recommend to um, students in the future? For honestly, I kind of wish I learned the um, auto rig um, function. I I think it would have been a lot faster than just doing everything by hand. Um, uh, <laughs> Fair enough. It's if if I had learned that instead of um, spending like the weeks uh, developing the character rig, I feel like I could have whipped out uh, more character models that we could have used and everything, um, okay. and maybe just assisted uh, in other aspects of the game. But Overall, I'm really happy that I learned like a lot of new skills in that regard. Um, but I don't know. We did. There were also a few other like artistic things we could have run into. Like uh, UV mapping was something that we didn't really plan yeah. ahead for. <laughs> so um, we wanted to texture stuff. I definitely want to comment on that. Uh, de as you make your assets, always UV map as you go. <laughs> don't come back later and try to fix it. Exactly. <laughs> Fair I enough. guess I can speak a little bit onto the VFX portions of it to try and. Well, for one, fighting with Unity and and its uh, like the like we said, the preview version, the low render pipeline of just fighting to make sure it doesn't bug out half the time in our version. But beyond that, just trying to optimize it so that way, like uh, especially with the characters, a point where you know characters and enemies could shoot bullets back at each other, and there's a little bullet trail particle effect behind that, and uh not worrying about how long the bullets last for it can sometimes clog up performance so then it was a <laughs> battle between going for an artistic style that we want but also just uh you know doing within technical limitations of it and just trying to keep everything as simple as possible so having that you know fighting your vision also dealing with technical limitations i think is a challenge not just vfx alone but for any of us on the team right on <laughs> Not to play bouncer, but uh, we'll have to wrap it up in just the next minute or two, guys. Sounds good. All right. Uh, any uh, final comments you guys like to make uh, before we uh, jump to the next group? Uh, I think it was definitely a learning experience for all of us to you know, transition from being able to usually work in the same space on this game to having to go full remote. Um, I know it's definitely something that I wasn't used to going into it, so I'm happy to be able to have that experience with you guys. All right, right on. Yeah, uh, said. This, again, the game looks great, guys. You did an amazing job for virtually the short time frame you have. So very excited to see what this uh, ended up looking like. Uh, thank you guys for all coming out. Uh, for those who like to want to play this game, we have a website that is linked on our uh, Twitch page that you can eventually go to the website and actually play this game. So uh, thank you guys for all showing out, and we'll head to the next group. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, Will. Yeah. Take it easy, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You too. All right. So next that we have on the list is White Cell. So let's let's pop them in here. All right, Adam and Josh, do we have you here? Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, can you guys hear? I can hear, I can you, hear just you fine. All right, awesome. Just give me one sec. I'm... No worries. <laughs> we have your PowerPoint presentation. Great. Ah, I can see you both now. All right, awesome. All right, just give me one second. I'll get this presentation up here. By all means. All right. OK. All right, cool. All right, so without further ado, guys, we have our next group uh, that will be showing us White Cell in Starbound. So okay. I will now pass it off to you guys. Are you sharing screen yet, Adam? Am yes. I? Uh, I can see your. There we go. Yeah, I think we just got a. It should be full oh, screen okay. now. Yeah. I got. I think there's just a little bit of lag there, but I think we. Yeah, oh. th is it all full screen for you? I can yeah, see I it just can see it now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Cool. All right. So. 
I'm Joshua Book. And uh, I'm Adam Stubich. And we're doing a uh, presentation kind of talking about our capstone today. And we're Team Blue Cat, Black Cat. And our presentation is titled Bashing Through the Door of Design with Swords Made of Pointers. So we are going to talk, like I said, about our initial experience with capstone and kind of our journey and where we're at now. Uh, and what we're working on and everything. So our initial goals coming into the capstone were pretty simple. Like both of us, we didn't know each other, uh, but we just wanted to gain more experience working with teams and doing game dev stuff. And we wanted to make a game that was scoped for capstone, something that we complete within that time frame. And, and that was hopefully interesting and unique and fun to play. But what actually happened was... Uh, we created a super complex game that's essentially like two games in one. One's a Metroidvania, the other's a shoot 'em up game. Um, and we're probably like a year and a half away from development completion. We also spent a lot of capstone crying because there was only two of us in the group and we were both programmers. So uh, we had to do the sound design, the game design, the art, everything had to be done by us and like i said we're programmers so it was a new experience wearing all these different hats um so our capstone essentially was four months of us developing systems for our capstone project and then we finally looked at our project in unity and we were like man i'm sick of looking at these ugly <laughs> primitive pills so we finally made some art and that was our capstone <laughs> outcome <laughs> Yeah, so going ahead into there, so our capstone project uh, was called Star Bonds. So I'll go into that a little bit more and tell you guys a little bit more about it. Uh, so in terms of the story, uh, we have a sentient starship uh, named Voithos. Uh, he's out in space. He's attacked by a group of vicious space marauders, and he crash lands uh, on this primitive planet. Uh, Voithos is then saved by a young boy named Edo, who's, you know, he's kind of raised himself on his own learn to survive in the wild all by himself and together uh they both form a destined friendship and they begin a journey to save Edo's world uh from these evil marauders that have come in to uh steal its natural resources and then uh so going on into the gameplay here uh you know like josh had mentioned what makes starbond unique uh is its mix of metroidvania and uh, shoot 'em up styles of gameplay. So the game itself is kind of split up into you know two different kinds of uh, levels. So you'll have Ado who's exploring these very vast, very expansive levels on the ground. Uh, while he's traveling around, he's fighting a variety of enemies and unlocking new abilities to be able to access more areas. And then also, uh, you also play in other levels as Voithos, where you're traversing the planet's atmosphere uh, in the shoot 'em up style of gameplay, fighting off these huge waves of enemy ships coming in at you. Now, one of the ways that we connect Edo and Void those styles of gameplay together uh, is having the upgrades that collect uh, actually correlate to each character. So for instance, both Edo and Voithos uh, kind of have lock-on abilities. Uh, Edo can kick launch enemies into the air and then use what we call the air hunt system. Basically, he can dash really quickly at enemies he's launched uh, and kind of string together a set of enemies all together at once. Uh, whereas Voithos uh, can basically lock on to multiple enemies at once uh, using his lock-on system as well. So in terms of the atmosphere and aesthetic for our game, uh, you know, we, we really want to create imaginative worlds for the player to explore. And, you know, since the game takes place on an alien planet, that really opens up the door for creative concepts uh, for habitats and all these creatures that can inhabit the world. Having a vibrant world is also very key. Uh, so, you know, looking at these images we have of Ratchet and Clank, the, you know, just a couple of uh, examples of just how vibrant and how gorgeous these worlds uh, we would like them to be, just that you can really get lost in them. Um, you know, we want Starbond to also have kind of an over-the-top tone to it. Again, kind of similar to Ratchet and Clank. You know, we want to convey vibrant characters and a lighthearted nature, uh, but without going overboard and being too goofy, uh, still having a semi-serious tone to it. 
Um, and then catchy music is also a huge priority for us. Uh, you know, we, we really like to put music in here that uh, really pushes the player forward and it's very energetic in nature. So our goal is to really capture that enthusiasm uh, and create emotion and themes for all of our different worlds. And then, uh, you know, lastly, going into our code and systems for this game, uh, you know, since Josh and I, since Josh and I are both strong programmers, our code systems are very robust. So, uh, you know, going over the uh, a few of those big ones really quickly, uh, since our players can explore uh, the levels out of order as well as return to them later, we've developed an expansive save system uh, that measures the player's progress, including the upgrades they've collected, levels completed, and a lot of other features as well. Um, we've also built our own custom collision detection system uh, because Unity Collision is trash. Um, our collision system also utilizes spatial partitioning, uh, so only objects that are near the player, such as terrain and enemies, uh, will check for collision updates, uh, saving those oh-so-precious processing cycles. Uh, we've also built a custom dialogue and menu system uh, to handle interactions with NPCs and display in-game alerts. Uh, other features uh, include real-time updating level maps. Uh, those are very useful for Eidos levels in particular just because they're so expansive. So it's, it's really nice to be able to know where you have explored and where you haven't yet. Um, we've also developed convenient tools for debugging uh, as we're developing, uh, such as visualizers to display collision detection, as well as the ability to freeze certain game objects during runtime. Uh, and then lastly, uh, our combat systems, like I talked about before, like Eido's Air Hunt and Voithos's Lock-On, uh, really add complexity to their methods of attacking, and they provide for more engaging ways to play, offering more strategies uh, when fighting against enemies. Uh, so with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into a little bit of gameplay here, uh, which I believe Will uh, will uh, be Absolutely. showing us, and Josh will tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, I will show the Starbound gameplay. All right. In the all right. Just to jump in here, we also had a question. Uh, you said that yes. you thought the Unity Collision system wasn't uh, what it could be or was missing out in a few different ways. Could you expand on that? Is there something you specifically don't like about it or you think it could do better or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, so I think there were a couple things that we uh, wanted to try and improve upon. So first of all, uh, I think with the Unity Collision, our, our main issue when we were trying to uh, code uh, uh, terrain specifically for Edo walking along the ground and detecting that kind of collision detection. Uh, we found that um, in our testing, he didn't always respond uh, the way we wanted to, always getting pushed up from the ground. Sometimes it would either be like a frame behind or it just wouldn't work out the way we uh, wanted to put it together. Um, so that was kind of one thing about it. Um, another thing as well with collision detection in Unity, when you, it, it's able to notify you when you collide with an object, but you don't know what kind of object that is right away. So basically you kind of have to do like a bunch of if statements or switch statements, and you can eventually figure out what you collided with, but that just takes up a little more uh, processing power to, to use that kind of method. So since Josh and I have a little more experience actually developing our own uh, collision detection and uh, systems in the past, we just kind of decided it would be easier just to kind of use our own method. So that way, that allows us more direct control uh, over when collision gets processed in the game loop uh, and, you know, more specifically defining what happens when this object collides uh, with this other kind of object. Does that answer your question? Uh, let's see. Yeah, thanks. OK, <laughs> sure. Awesome. Yeah, again, just like anything, collision can be very tricky depending on what the game that you're working on with. So let's show the trailer. Oh, sorry, the gameplay. Let's take a look. All right, so we have some gameplay for Starbond, which is essentially a prototype for us. And you're going to see right away, we're not strong artists. We just put something in there to at least have something. Um, but right away, what you're going to see with the gameplay is there's lots of platforming and there's a lot of mobility that Edo, the boy, has. Um, he's able to 
dash towards enemies, dash away from them, and you can see the, the uh, player using the air hunt right there, so you can knock enemies up and just keep slashing through them, and it's almost kind of like a crowd control thing and a way to singulate enemies up in the air and make it a little sa safer for yourself to attack. So this is just, you know, instances of us, like, uh, there's collecting items throughout the world as well. Um, we're testing out different enemies and what we like. So this is the outer world. Voithos is traveling around. That's just a quick little clip, clip of our outer world where, and that's a gen essentially our level select. And then here we have an actual um, Voithos level. So Voithos is not only the way that you're going to be traveling from levels. He has his own level. So this is some of the shmup combat. And we can see we wanted to keep that haste and that agile feeling that Edo has within Voithos as well. So that's why we have the lock-on system. So even if you're dodging and um, trying to get away from dangerous space or trying to control space, you can at least still continue doing damage to enemies, uh, which we thought is a really cool, uh, fairly unique system, and it's enjoyable for people to play. Um, and it was a lot of work getting that lock-on system to run properly because it's a uh, NP problem for anybody interested in math. So that is basically the uh, gameplay that we have for Starbond. So we can kick that video off then, Will. Very cool, very cool. All right. So if we switch back to uh, the PowerPoint. So that was our capstone project. Very cool, uh, that's great. Are we back on? Uh... Yes. Okay, um, we're back. Yeah. So, so after our capstone, um, we decided, you know, the year is one AC. Our life forces are running low. We desperately need an artist for Starbond because uh, we are not too great at art. And we wanted to take a break and change pace a little bit and make something easier than Starbond, which is a really complex, a really big game that we're going to be releasing like in a year and a half to two years for the PlayStation. Um, so we wanted to slow down a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So with that, uh, that is where our second project comes in, White Cell. So, you know, like Josh said, we are still continuing development on Starbond, but you know, we both wanted to go through the process of making a simpler, uh, complete game from beginning to end and getting that out in a relatively quick amount of time. Uh, we can also utilize what we've learned from making this smaller game into a larger project like Starbond uh, as well. And White Cell was our answer. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, as well. So uh, looking at the story, uh, you know, in White Cell, you play as a white blood cell named Witzel. Now, Witzel is a member of a white blood cell knighthood uh, tasked with protecting the little queen. Uh, now, the little queen has recently contracted a virus, and Witzel, with the help of his companions, is determined to wipe the virus out and destroy it. Now, in terms of the gameplay, uh, White Cell is a roguelite action-adventure mobile game. Uh, so in the game, the player will be fighting off hordes of virus cells and bosses uh, to reach the center of the virus core and take out the virus. Now, the farther the player progresses in the playthrough, uh, the more the virus intensifies and new dangers emerge. Now, defeating enemies earns the player red blood cells, which can be spent uh, between play sessions to permanently upgrade Witzel's abilities. Now, when the player dies, their playthrough begins anew, but they still retain their collected red blood cells and their purchased upgrades. So the game is really built on these many playthrough attempts. Basically, the whole gameplay loop is really centered on you know, playing through the game, playing through the waves, going back and upgrading, and going back and trying again. Uh, each playthrough is randomized and changes depending on the player's overall progression uh, to keep every attempt unique and engaging. Uh, we also want to encourage different play styles with all the upgrades we have available. So, you know, the primary upgrades, you'll, you'll only start with just a couple upgrades, but once you get the first set, or once you get one of those upgrades, That'll unlock further abilities uh, that enhances that particular path, which really allows the player to commit to a particular 
uh, play style that best fits their needs. Hey guys, so, real quick, I'm just gonna pop in and say we got a five minute warning to make sure that we're keeping on track. By all means. Great. Okay, so yeah, with that said, uh, we're going to jump into a little bit of a White Cell gameplay here, which I think Will will be showing us as well. Absolutely. Excited to see it. Very cool concept. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> we can see uh, Adam's the one playing right here. So we just kick it right into the action with White Cell. Um, you're going to just see how you wander around this infinite space and you just kind of fight enemies while you and as you defeat enemies, you increase your virus level and your virus level as that goes up, the difficulty of the game goes up, your rewards go up, everything goes up, things going up is good. So we're going to be seeing them maneuvering around enemies, attacking them, trying to not to get hit. We can see him using the dash, which has iframes on it, and it also serves as an attack. So it does. <laughs> like we could see there it killed one of the enemies um and this is just showing off some of the enemies that we have so far and he's just chilling around walking around oh and it looks like he died so <laughs> he's gonna return to the hub and he's gonna head over to blood mups atelier which is our shop <laughs> and he's gonna pick up some of these sick upgrades so we can see he's buying sword range He's upgrading the Saito shot, which you guys are about to see, and he's getting emboldened membrane, which is a defensive thing. So we can see in that last part that he died in one hit, and he's going to go right back into it. Wham! So it's really quick to go buy stuff and then get back into the action. So the HUD changed a little bit. On the top left, you can see some more shield pips. You can see those little white balls, which is the Saito shot. Now he has a ranged attack and if you also notice hopefully it's clear enough to notice that the range of his sword has actually been increased so he can do those sword slashes just a little bit safer now um and like adam had mentioned we want to try to uh incent not incentivize but encourage different varieties of play style so if somebody maybe wants to play more defensively and wants to be more of a ranged player if they want to focus spending their points on uh, ranged abilities, they can do that, you know, and vice versa if they want to be a little more headstrong and aggressive and assert themselves into the danger and take that risk of getting hit, they're going to be rewarded with a little more extra damage with melee abilities. Very cool. So we can just see Adam killing some stuff and he's switching it up every now and then. So he's like, all right, I want to go a little ranged here. All right, he's getting hit. Also, one of the defensive abilities, so emboldened membrane. You not only have more health, but if you spend a while not taking damage, you regenerate that health as well. So um, health isn't this uh, stock of something that is a finite resource. As long as you're not getting too beat up, you'll be able to come back. And that was a boss that spawned, but we're going to cut that. Um, to leave a little cliffhanger for you. So, um, and if we, so if we can switch back to Adam, yep. the uh, PowerPoint. <clears throat> so, all right, let's see. All right, so essentially, White Cell, uh, that's White Cell, and that's our game loop so far. And uh, that's been in development for about a month, and that's what we've been able to accomplish within about a much, month of time. So, because of Starbind and all the systems work we did in it, we were able to progress, and there's only two of us, with White Cell fairly quickly. So with White Cell, because we didn't have to worry about custom collision that we weren't a fan of, debugging tools, yada, yada, we were able to go right to those high-level systems, like uh, randomizing enemy waves based on the player's game progression. Um, so, <clears throat> and that also leads us into current development. So we're also... We're already able to focus on balancing the game, adding new content, like adding new modes like boss rushes, creating new music, uh, a playlist feature so people can listen to particular songs that they enjoy the most in the game while they're playing. Um, and then we also want to be able to give players unlockables for completing accomplishments within the game because we feel like unlockables are kind of like an, a lost thing within games. So people can unlock music, they can unlock costumes that even change the animations of um, the characters that you play as, which leads us into our kind of philosophy is, you know, Adam and I, you know, we enjoy working as a team and we think we make a pretty good team. 
and the philosophy that we want to continue with is, you know, making things homegrown as possible. And what we mean by that is we try to do everything ourselves. You know, we're using a, a commercial engine right now, but besides that, uh, we try to do everything ourselves from code to sound, to the sound effects, to the music, to the art. We try to do everything ourselves. Um, cause we want to put our, a reflection of ourselves into our games and pe we think people are going to be interested in you know a game having a little bit of soul into it and you can tell it was made by some humans and it's not this completely perfectly polished thing um and we want to also be able to treat players well and get players excited about playing blue cat black cat games as well um and we're going to be doing that by putting in uh strong gameplay and strong music because we want people to have an enjoyable experience. And just because White Cell is a mobile game, we don't want it to be like this downgrade of a video game. We want it to be something that people can come back to and thoroughly enjoy. Um, and then- We're gonna have to on. wrap up real quick soon. Yeah. Uh, so They're can you guys finish up yeah, the final thoughts? Yeah, the last note on that is uh, we need artists. <laughs> so um, if anybody knows any artists, uh, <laughs> or you are an artist and you're looking for a project to work on, this is the contact info for us. Awesome. Well, the game, both of the games look absolutely amazing, Josh and Adam. Uh, again, Thank will you. this game be available on the website? Uh, White Cell is, yeah, there is a link to the awesome. itch.io so you can download it and play it on your PC right now since most people don't probably mobile game. <laughs> but yeah, so we awesome. have a question. Uh, are you guys looking specifically for just 2D artists? We are looking uh, for 2D, yeah. All right. Awesome. So their contact info should be, again, is right here. It should also be on the website of the, yourself. So either the game you find interesting and want to work on, please reach out to them. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Hope awesome. You enjoyed it. All right. Thank you, guys. Great job, guys. Love love both of the games. Uh, hope to see more from it. Can't wait to see it awesome. down its full, full uh, potential. All right. Cool. Take it easy. Take All it right. easy, guys. Thank you, guys. All right. It will. While we bring in the next team, would you mind uh, doing a quick little shameless plug to make sure everybody knows sure, sure. what this channel is and if they uh, should follow? Sure, absolutely. So everybody out there, uh, again, this is uh, the people that are currently hosting us, as I mentioned before, is the JDE Games. So if you were a DePaul student and eager to join in the development of JDE Games... Sorry. So those who are uh, interested in the JDE chat. Sorry. Let me go with that. Sorry. We had a call coming up. All right. So uh, those who are interested in, uh, those who are students at DePaul and interested in game development, uh, you might want to join the JDE experience. So again, they are a great group. They're effectively developers that are part of the school, students even from DePaul, and they also, again, work with other students from around sh Chicago. So if you're a developer that wants to get into the fray of developing games, they're definitely the group to uh, join. Uh, I recommend that you uh, follow their Twitch page. And again, there's also a website you could go visit for any upcoming events. Uh, a future event that might interest you is that I will be doing Unreal workshops over the summer live on Twitch through the JDE. So if you want to learn how to use the Unreal Engine, again, come join me this summer. Without a further ado, let's bring in the next group, which is Pillars of Creation. All right, do we have the Pillars crew in here? Hello. Hey, how are we doing, guys? Hello. Hey, doing great. Awesome. Uh, so introduce yourself. Games. All right, we're Frogling Games, and our game is Pillars of Creation. It is a real-time card game. Um, I'm Luke Mayo. I'm the lead programmer and designer, and I did the music in the game as well. I'm David Doherty. I did a lot of the networking and Steam hookup. Hey, I'm Les Garcia. I did the character art, UI, and the community manager. All right, beautiful. So let's take a look at the trailer, and then we'll discuss a little bit more. Oh, sorry. Did I interrupt you, Luke? Yes, I was just about to say, uh, those with us who are not currently in oh, the stream... Yes. Or still in our group are Sarah Asmussen, who's our gameplay programmer and editor scripter, David Anderson, who is our gameplay programmer and server side gameplay programmer, Gavin Roberts, who is also a character artist, and Rob Moreno, who is our environment artist on the team. Awesome. Well done. Well, great to see you guys all out here. Let's take a look at Pillars of Creation.
Okay. Well done on that trailer. That mm, that's all right. That that gets me excited. I really like I like this. So, uh, so tell us about this. So again, so tell us about Pillars of Creation. Right. So Pillars of Creation is set in a fantasy world where the various nations are at unrest and at war with each other in the midst of an attempt to understand their world's origins. Um, it is a real time card game. There are no turns, no phases. It is a competitive two-player game where you bring an army of creatures to life and wage war against one another. Awesome. Okay, so I'm getting like a lot of the Magic the Gathering uh, vibes, or even again, I'm a big Hearthstone uh, fan as well. So uh, what inspired you to make you a game like this? Again, this had to be a difficult uh, challenge to take on. Card games aren't easy to basically get up and running. So a few of us have played card games in the past and uh, have just really enjoyed them. And we were kind of questioning, like, we didn't want to just make another game. Like, oh, anyone can make this. It's like, why do we want to make something unique? Or, like, how can we make it unique? And after, like, going through a couple, well, variations, where it's like, well, what if we made it real time? And when we were talking about it and, like, trying to figure out all the possible issues, where it's like, we were hitting so many. And we knew, like, okay, this obviously isn't going to be an easy choice. No. But also a lot of the people in our group just enjoy really difficult challenges. So I think it was just like the perfect storm, I guess, almost, if you put it that way. Yeah, the real time had to be a pretty unique challenge to actually get it working right, to get it feel balanced, since most all the card games I've played are all effectively turn by turn. You have kind of phases you go through. So uh, how did you guys get through those problems? This, what's, a, what's amazing? The best, I think, honestly, it's like we, we understood what systems we wanted to try to put in place and like how they would work. And we were kind of lucky they did work. They just were incredibly, like, not balanced. <laughs> and there was just literally a period of time where there was a group of, like, I think, three or four of us. We were playtesting this every single day for, like, minimum two hours, sometimes going up to four. And yeah. after messing with that, we were able to, like, really dissect the issues we were having, what was going wrong, why did it feel this way, why did that feel bad. And once we got to that point where it's like we started making really small adjustments to the system, and just it started feeling really 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 good i would say the biggest adjustment we made was probably the in the form of the mana generation it's uh it used to be linear at the start in terms of like when you would play a single generator now it's not it decays a little and that just it made the game from feeling like you're just spamming cards the moment they get to your hand to okay i actually have to think about my decisions now <laughs> that, find a dollar for every time i said that <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing so yeah uh uh, the other part of this game was absolutely beautiful. Uh, can you come on and basically, again, what, what inspired you for the look of this game? What's great? Uh, so we, we researched like a lot of like the Magic the Gary's uh, art style that we like um, went through further and look at like other inspirations like League of Legends, Paragon, Hearthstone. And I mean, we also really dig like creatures like elves, um, goblins, there's rats in the game and a lot more. <laughs> I mean, the board, the art, the everything looks absolutely great. The visuals, that had been a really tough hill to climb. But that looks I think great. Luke can talk about that more since he had a lot to deal with that in terms of, like, the actual layout of the game. Right, in terms of the layout, yeah. Um, Rob did a great job uh, making that board for us, getting that effect to look um, as good as it did. Um, we did have to do a lot of playtesting, though, to really understand where people were looking, where cards ought to be on the board. Um, we went through a couple of iterations early on in our design um, to kind of fit things into place. Where we have it now is um, the temple zone where you generate your mana. That has shrunk in size significantly. <laughs> right now, you just see the uh, mana icons. Um, before the whole card would be placed on the board and we realized, okay, there's no space for our other card types. So we had to scale that down, move it to the side. There was a lot of shuffling going on through development. I can imagine. So uh, the other one's got to be uh, asked in question here, me a programmer myself. Man, uh, taking on a network game cannot be easy, especially, again, a card game with so many rule sets. <laughs> Yeah, so I think this, our other programmer, David, could probably speak a little more about this since I handled the networking, but he handled a lot of the flow of how the net, how the code would essentially be uh, executed in terms of like what zones being evaluated when and so on. And I think him really dissecting that made it a lot clearer in terms of like how interactions are going to work. It's like, okay, if this go, the zone's always 
um, called before this one. We know this is going to happen before this always. So I think the biggest issue in terms of the actual networking, though, I would just say is honestly, I wasn't as familiar with what networking was when I first started that I probably should have been. <laughs> and it just honestly bit me more. Like the biggest thing I wish is I just spent more time learning the fundamentals. Um, I thought I knew them and I clearly did not after messing around with it. Uh, we've all been bit by that before. But it looks absolutely great. So anything else you want to talk about for development or challenges you had on this game? But it looks amazing. Can't wait to play this one. Yeah. The, the art process of it, um, I would say like the hardest part was there was like over 75 card art that, that me and Gavin. Whoa. And it was a lot for like within five or six months, like tackling that and, and our school and work um, responsibilities. Oh, wow. So, so there's 75 the, different actual card portraits. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. And we didn't have to worry too much about like changing up our style. Um, so, so, so that we could, so we're able to like finish the card art every single week. That's, and that's... it was beneficial was the programmers um they're the ones that that has some like um creations in mind so uh, it was helpful that they gave us like some sketches that we could like finalize them make it all look pretty for the game um for my proudest moment was um huh. the cactus races those like prickly cactuses yeah they, they were made as a joke um during during the during class and then the team was like yes add those to the game <laughs> and and we, and we added those in, um, but there was like a um, cactus in mind um, that that Luke brought up, um, which is like um, um, it's called the um, Kraken cactus that was created by Funny Money, aka Edgar Nielsen. So I asked him like, "Hey, can we? I really love this ca um, cactus. Can we add it to your to the game?" He's like, "Cool, yeah. So let me help you create some more um, cactuses." And that was like a huge surprise. I really appreciate him um, helping me out with, with the cactuses. That's um, awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, again, uh, while it's out there, does anybody have any questions in the chat? Just please uh, type them in. Uh, so anything else you want to comment about this? So, again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the programming angle was problem after problem. <laughs> uh, so I think our assets directory has 4,000 files in it total, with half of those being meta files. Um, that reduces to having 500 scripts in the game, 100 of which are the actual messages we're sending across the network. Um, networking itself was a huge <laughs> challenge, because essentially we had to write two games at the same time. Um, there was two ways we could have done this. We could have done it where you had two separate uh, solutions and you just copy paste code in between the two, but that would require you to have a lot of redundant code. So what we ended up doing was using conditional compiling to make it so that, okay, we can set the game to client mode and run only client code, set the game to server, run only server code. That was gonna work great until Unity serialization started fighting us a little bit. <laughs> um, you would switch to client, and then suddenly all of your references in your scene are unlinked. <laughs> so and if you saved the scene uh, when it was in that state, it would get stuck like that. Um, we really kind of had to just understand the system we had created and how it worked and where it broke, and we just had to work with it. Um, and also remember that anytime you change anything in the game, you have to build two games. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we no. had a question from Ivan. It looks like uh, how many unique cards are in the game? Ooh, unique cards. Uh, I believe last time I checked, there were 165. Whoa, 165. That's wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, can you? Oh, so another question. I, could, I should speak to that actually. Yeah. Sure. Um, Sarah. Uh, is our gameplay programmer, editor, scripter. She devised a very nice system for us uh, utilizing scriptable objects that made it really easy to make a card. As soon as we had an idea, we're just like, do we have a scriptable object that uses that behavior? Yes, we do. Let's make the card. Um, it effectively became like we wrote a scripting system using scriptable objects in the game, basically. Uh, if you look at our cards as an asset in the game, you can just pop open an event, and then there's a list of these scriptable objects with their like different data. Well, that sounds pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, very cool. Uh, so again, uh, what about the future of this game? So again, uh, where do you see this game going? So are you guys planning to work on it outside of after graduation? I yeah. think. Hey, Luke, you can actually speak on this. 
Sure. Yeah, we would like to work on this game after graduation. In fact, we are planning to get this released on Steam. We currently do have a build on Steam, but not publicly. However, Ooh. we are almost in the process of getting some beta keys ready. Oh, um, oh okay. I'm excited. Yeah, Lettuce will be posting a link on our website, uh, the Capstone website our page on the Capstone website, where people can just shoot us an email, we'll send you a beta key. Awesome! Um, <laughs> from what I, I, I do feel though, that if you are gonna play the game, this is a closed beta, we would like people not to upload footage of them playing it just yet. Um, we'd like to get to that point, but let's just keep it on the wraps for now. We're testing functionality, game feel, those kinds of things. Very cool. So yeah, it looks like everybody's really excited to try it out. That is awesome. Uh, cool. cool. Is there any uh, final comments you want to uh, put on this before we put to the next one? I think I'm good. Well, uh, maybe a couple uh, bits of advice, maybe, David? Oh. oh. Uh, you also have another question. Uh, how do you plan on doing monetization? Is this going to be a free-to-play game? Right. Duelist, Duel's Links? It seems hard to release a buy-to-play for a card game. Right, we're definitely thinking free to play for this. Okay, fair enough. You know, right on. Like the uh, loot back, loot boxes as card packs kind of thing. <laughs> Seems to be the popular ones out there. I mean, Heart, right. uh, they, Heart, Hearthstone alone has basically made that very clear. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So no, the game looks absolutely amazing. I love the visuals, the gameplay, and also the take on the real time uh, card playing. That's again right. feature I have not seen before. So yeah, it, is, it worked out really well. There was a game I played with David where it was like I was I had built up a custom deck and I was just kind of like playing, looking at his mana, looking at my mana, looking at my deck timer, looking at the cards on the field, looking at my hand. And it was just left, right, looking at everything, trying to make choices. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's a very yeah. unique thing. I was proud to say I did beat you once. It was I got Luke <laughs> many times, but I did beat him. I did beat Luke once. I did an right. uh, old uh, gathering tactic. But, again, the gameplay yeah. is absolutely great. So those out there who love card games, definitely check this one out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, very cool. Uh, Grayson, uh, is our next team ready? Not quite yet. We're almost there. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so uh, if there's any final comments, uh, again, do you have any final comments here? Then we'll take a short pause to get ready for our next group. Yeah, I think David, you guys got want anything? to say? Uh, I guess the thing by the end, it's just... Luke touched upon it briefly. It's we were essentially working on two projects, but then by the time it's like we're also in the midst of essentially shifting a lot of our code to be on a dedicated server that handles matchmaking by default. So we're adding another process and I guess the best thing I can say is just like make sure you understand um job responsibilities in terms of how you want to split it up because I'm um, a lot of at least uh i believe programmers coming out of school including myself we're so used to at one project and that's it versus this it's like three four working together so yeah for <laughs> again multiplayers are just becoming bigger and bigger popular genres so uh what would be like your big advice for effectively new students getting into capstone or other projects trying to make a multiplayer game what would you recommend? if you're working on a multiplayer game just the game itself is not like the whole thing. There is a lot of stuff in the back end you have to take care of that just makes you able to get to the game. Make sure you don't slack on that because it's a big part of the user experience. So again, uh, that framework's yeah. gotta be it's solid like before. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Luke. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, if you're using the Lidgren framework, definitely make use of those simulated settings. There was a bug that occurred in the game that was heavily game breaking but only occurred under under situations of significant latency so do test your code under latency conditions and packet loss conditions correct i believe that was when we did one of our play tests just to have it just so happened we all were sharing screen that it caused the issue right mm -hmm. exactly right. that was it was a game so for those developing mul uh, multiplayer games just just having people basically sharing your screen through Discord is enough to basically throw some interesting bugs your way. Yeah. Uh, You'll see a lot of issues caused by the same problem that are just different issues. Always have common <laughs> multi, like networking issues in the back of your head when you're playtesting and looking for bugs because you can never really count those out. Yeah, I've heard the, again, I think you guys even talked before, it's like you guys have also worked in multi-thread development. Networking multi-thread development seem to have some correlation between each other. Yeah, they overlap a lot. It's just the only difference is uh, multi-threading. You'll actually guarantee the instructions being sent. <laughs> the other one, maybe it'll arrive. 
Uh, All right, we I are. Thing? You have something to say, Les? Oh, um, um, uh, is, it, is it if I can add one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go for it. I, I would say, like, in general, for, like, um, capstone games and games in general, just communication is key. Um, you got to make sure that the team is on the same page, like, we're, we're thinking the same thing. Because even if you, like, um, describe something, the other person could, like, interpret it differently. So that was something that, that was a struggle, like, throughout this process. Yeah. And can I just say one last thing? Shout out to the group members that couldn't be here. They like helped us a ton with this, and they did so much work. Yeah. Which are Sarah, Rob, Gavin, David. They crushed it. Absolutely. Shout out to you guys. You did absolutely great. The game looks amazing. I can't wait to play this more. <laughs> Sweet. Very All right. Cool. We got the next team all ready to come. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you for showing us Pillars of Creation. I can't wait to see where this go this turns out and. Definitely, hopefully, a couple months, maybe in the year. Can't wait to play it on Steam. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks. Peace. Take it easy. Thanks a lot. Are they moving us out, or are we good? All right. Do we? Oh, we have Alex here. Alex, can you hear me? All right. Yeah, you were cutting. Oh, sorry. Alex, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Now. How are we doing, Alex? Feel good. All right. Very cool. So, can you tell us about, again, so, again, tell us about your game. What's your game called? We have, uh, if I pronounce it right, uh, George Gonis is, oh no, or wait, what's the name of the trailer? Oh, <laughs> When You Wish Upon a Star. I apologize. Well, I... All right, so tell I us can't... a little about your game, Alex. Yes, yeah, sorry, I had to, I had the chat open, I had to close it because you were fucking over yourself. Oh, my apologies. Oh, it was just I had it open, so it was playing your thing, then playing it immediately back to me. Oh, yeah, and make cool. sure the, uh, the Twitch. Absolutely. No, I'm good now. I can, audio's good on my end. Hello, so, my right. name's Alex Janice. I'm on team. I don't have a team. <laughs> That's all right. So your game's called yeah. When You Wish Upon a Star. So, uh, yes, it is. Uh, let's see the trailer, and then let's talk about it. Yeah, for my trailer, uh, rated Man, T for Teen, there's some curse so words shitty. in it, if anyone is just the bothered by that. Shit. Same yeah. office job, low pay wages, everyone hates me, I can't even, surely out. God, man, I wish things would change. I want money, and a girl, and a whole bunch of other things. Hello, my child. Do you seek to improve your station in life? Look, man, I'm not buying a timeshare or whatever you're peddling. Oh, it is nothing so simple. I am not selling, but merely giving. Everything you desire can be yours if you simply believe. Sure, pal. At least take this as a token of faith, my friend. All right, man. Find your one true self. Join the Starlight Self-Help Group, where all your wishes will come true. <sighs> Man, what the hell? I mean, this is literally what I was asking for a second ago. Might as well try it out. Ah, hello, my friend. I am glad to see you have joined us this evening. I mean, I didn't have any kind of plan, so what the hell? Why are you wearing a robe? All members must wear the sacred garb of our master. Oh my god, this is an orgy, ain't it? Oh, no, 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 you misunderstand. We are a spiritual group. Oh my god, this is some faith healing shit, ain't it? 
Again, you misunderstand. We practice the old ways of when the gods were the heavens themselves. Master Doshrar gives us all the things we require in life. Doshrar? Is he some kind of old Scandinavian guy? No, he is of no race, gender, or species. He ascends us all. Okay, so I'm gonna go now. Wait, do not leave. What is your name? <sighs> Dale. Brother Dale. I am Brother Richard. I understand your hesitation. I have been misled before. But Master Doshrar is no fake. Please just come inside. I swear to you, you will not be disappointed. Fine, Rishi. But if anyone tries to touch me, or tries to sell me shit, I'm out. Bless you, Brother Dale. The heavens shine down upon you today. Let us head inside. What will happen next? Play the game and find out. Alright. Okay, so worship upon your stars. So. <laughs> Alright, tell us about this game, Alex. <laughs> Well, I'll say this. I have many talents when it comes to game design. Voice acting is not one of them. <laughs> oh, no, again, I fully understand here, again. So it sounds like, is this a sole development project, just yourself? Yeah, I developed it uh, by myself. Right on. Um, Impressive. I used Bitsy because with the time span we had, I wanted one that Required the least amount of programming because that is not my strong suit. I can do it, but with all the stuff I, with all the stuff I had implemented in my game, it would have taken a lot longer to get every single thing down. Whereas I spent more time on the art and the writing process for my game. Right on. Okay. Uh, so again, so you had to do. Uh... The art, the design, all of that. So, what was your like? Uh, what was your inspiration behind this game? So, uh, again, why do you want to make this game? So, it seems like it has a theme to it. So, tell me about that. Yeah, this is probably the part that's going to be the longest because my muse for this game changed a little between when I started and when I finished. But without spoiling everything about it, it's a of life kind of story game there's not a lot of gameplay there's a lot of reading okay and a lot of writing on my part <laughs> yeah, it's basically absolutely. the length of an actual thesis but the main moral per se is that we wish for change a lot but wishing doesn't get us very far change comes from action okay and well when i first did that inspiration was sort of like well, yeah, the first, like, when you wish upon a star, all your dreams come true. And it's just like, as we're going off into the world, a lot of things are changing really fast. And yeah, yeah I didn't wish original. for this game. Didn't wish for this game to work. I made it work. Okay, right on. But as uh, but as the, well, I'll just say it, the world outside changed during the second half. Yeah, a lot of things are changing around us as well and yeah i'll say this to everybody listening like yeah like wishing is nice but yeah if you want to make the change change you want in life oh get it there won't be a magic dude with a pamphlet to a wishing star to give it to you and yeah like i think we should really try and put what we want to see changed in our work because so many people will see our work Absolutely. Very good message. So what was some of the, what was the most difficult uh, part about developing this game for you? Um, it's a two-way thing. One was motivation <laughs> during the second half because we're at home. I think a lot of people sure. who weren't in groups, because I know I'm not the only one, felt that like the first two weeks, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I stayed at home and I didn't think about it. Yeah, that's but, uh, in times. terms of in terms of gameplay itself, the hardest part was making the dialogue, not writing wise, but structure wise, perfect. Because with the I'm using Bitsy and with Bitsy, like you have to space things out so 
each line ends up in its own space with correct spacing, so it's not like Gail says one line and then the next dialogue bleeds into the other line. Sure. Considering how much I wrote, there was a lot of that that I had to do. Very cool. Uh, so, uh, again, how far are you on this project then? So we saw a cool trailer here, so is your, are you still planning on the work on this project, or is there still more to go in this game? Um, as of right now, the trailer, I stopped it before you went in, obviously. There's, like, multiple rooms after that. As of right now, I'd say it's, like, a really good, complete demo. Like, the whole story's there, but it's very short and... Okay. Like, so I a good feel like slice. I feel like I could expand upon it a little, because, yeah, even towards the end, with the ending dialogue, I even added, like, a <laughs> point where it's just like, all your problems were solved in one day. <laughs> like, if it was if it was fleshed out, it'd be like a few. Sure. He wished for, like, three things, the rule of three. Absolutely. Like, the rule of three happens in one as strengths. Sure. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to comment about this game? So, anything else you'd like to say to other future developers out there? Um, well, to, I don't... What I'll say is I did, did kind of send the <laughs> inspiration part, but yeah, it's just like, as we're, things are changing really fast, this is like the last time some of us might even see each other out in the big circle, but best if we all, like, keep in touch, and, like, I think plenty of other people can, like, get behind the same idea of, like, my game, like, regardless of what your game's about, like, if your game has, like, a point about change to it, and I think it's really good, and we should all strive to work together to, like, each other to make Absolutely. changes. That is a great message. Do it by ourselves. Absolutely. Collectiveness. Yay. Absolutely. So, uh, I had a question for the chat. So, when will the game be available? Um, it's currently available on itch and on the website. Awesome. In its current, like I said, you can play it now. It's the whole story. I just personally wish I could have flushed it out more, and in the future, I might. Very cool. Like a 2.0 version. But as of right now, yeah, it's finished. You can play it. All right. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Uh, is there anything, final comments you want to make before we go on to the next game? So I still got you there, Alex? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you were meant to chat. Oh, yeah, no. I was asking. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah. But no, but, for me, like, yeah, yeah, just thank you, everyone listening. Absolutely. Hope you enjoy my game, and from the people who've already went, your games look really good. Yeah, again, Mine yours look great as well. Uh, thank you for sharing it today. Thank you for coming out, man. In all seriousness, yeah, no, seriously, good job, everybody. We did it. Absolutely, did it. absolutely. Again, great message. Again, good. Seems like a good message in the game. I really enjoyed that. Awesome. All right. Uh, so, thank you for coming out, Alex. Uh, Grayson, are we next, ready for the next group? We are all set. All right, cool. All right, thank you very much, Alex. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. You too, man. All right. So. And um, we're going to bring the next team in now. All right. Uh, after this team, we can take a little five to ten minute break. Sounds good to me. All right, let's bring in the next group. I think we're all set. All right, awesome. So we the next game that's up on the plate is Zom Noms. <laughs> Love the name. So do we have everybody here? Yeah. All so. right, yes. cool. Uh, we're all here. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce you. Some, uh, tell, us about her, tell us about this game. Or would you like me? Oh, uh, yeah, so it looks like you have played through. So tell us about this game. All right, uh, I'm Christian. I'm a programmer uh, that worked on some of this. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Jalen. I was a uh, designer that worked on the game. Uh, I'm Jasmine, and I did the majority of the sound design, as well as assisted here and there with everything else. Raymond, and I do mainly programming, a little bit of everything else, too. 
Very cool. And so, yep, so this is Zomnoms. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry so, for getting off. Oh, no, no, no. Just uh, so Zomnoms. Again, I'm assuming it's about zombies. Tell us about this game. Yeah, so, you know, it's about zombies. You know, you always hear about humans uh, defeating zombies and always winning. So now it's their turn to strike back. So this is our top-down uh, RPG strategy game uh, where you work to eliminate all of the human race. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, two levels in the game at the moment, and they're different scenarios. They each uh, contain uh, different uh, gameplay mechanics. Uh, this is like our second level where you have to pretty much earn abilities and you take control as a new zombie. Um, so you fall into these chemicals and you get like, you can upgrade to like 30%, upgrade your damage, upgrade your speed. Um, yeah. So. Very cool. So, uh, okay, so top down looks like from what I've played before in this, it's uh, basically an RPG, it has some strategy elements too. I know way in the video you fetch will see that you can command the zombies too, correct? Yeah, um, so based on the levels, uh, we have different setup. And the, com the current state of the game and commander mode it only works for um, hospital level. Okay. Although uh, you do have that uh, in the, the other level too, but it's not like the main part of the game where you micromanage everything. So the commander mode will be like for the end game upgrades and Very cool. that short amount of time during the boss fights. So uh, what was the, some inspiration behind making this game? Because I love the whole uh, the light mechanic in this game too. So can you tell us about what was the inspiration behind this game? Why make a zombie game? Uh, so uh, I'm a programmer. I program uh, the initial, like the gameplay system, uh, some of the NPC AI. Um, by, by the time we started the project, I already have the, most of the gameplay system in place. And uh, at that time, we have a very basic premise that is a zombie versus humans. And <laughs> it's like, okay, let's make a game that uh, you start from a zombie's perspective and kind of prowl through the levels and in some way. And that's what this project, um, that's what in the capstone uh, we pretty much do is the designing the levels and designing sounds and arts and everything to make it feel more you know, immersive and everything. Absolutely. And uh, more about this, because um, the first hospital level, and it's more like a survival map. And for the second map, uh, the, the bio camp, what we call it, and uh, the bio camp map, yeah. the it's an adventure map, basically you, um, you adventure through the map, but at, at different stages, you get upgrades. There are totally four um, upgrades throughout the stages. And so originally when I designed the level is that uh, I want to make a, like a very, just one upgrade and you choose between a range zombie or a melee zombie. But then later, as I make the levels, I feel like it may be a too much of a change because it depends on what you, what strain you choose. Maybe, uh, so for the range zombie and melee zombie, it works completely different. So I need to like, make the level uh, to to respond to that, uh, you know, variance. And and as I make the level, I feel like that may be too much of a change. So instead of like big one upgrade, that change everything. I break down the level, uh, break down the, the strength, uh, the, the abilities into small parts and, and kind of like make the player feel comfortable with the level first and make some small upgrade and other upgrades and, and at the end fight a boss. So that way, more smooth and to yeah, play. A lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of working mechanics in the game. It looks absolutely great. So uh, the art style here, anything you want to come out of that? I mean, I love the little uh, little zombie and also the whole light mechanic looks really cool. Um, for this uh, game, uh, it yeah. doesn't have a lighting actually. All of this is just sprites. It's not like it has a material surface and you shine some lights onto them. It, it doesn't, it's all like one texture. Oh, very cool. Well done. One giant texture uh, uh, that I, I like work with in the Photoshop. All right, that's pretty cool. I like that. So yeah, you're just manipulating a texture that's overlaying the whole game. So that's pretty exactly. cool. Very cool. Uh, so what were some of the biggest challenges about making this game that you guys would like to comment on? 
Um, I know for me, it was definitely like uh, AI um, and kind of getting that like as a good feeling, especially with the command mode um, and trying to dust and um, make them work. Uh, specifically, but we don't want the zombies to be too smart either. Right. Uh, we want them to kind of be pretty dumb and needing a good commander and leader to lead them on the way. Yeah. Um, but also always, making the humans fight for themselves. Yeah. AI always has that problem between just smart enough where it's fun, but not too smart where it just makes it impossible to play. Very cool. Uh, anything else? Anybody else would like to comment about basically big challenges they worked on developing this game? Uh, Sure, you can go first. Okay, I guess I was going to say, like, one of the problems that I kind of had when I was working on some of my additions were, like, scope. Yeah. Trying to make sure that, like, I was never, like, out of scope with, like, my additions. Just in general. Makes sense to me. Very cool. Hey, we got a question in the chat for you guys. Uh, so, Caustic Photon asks, uh, since you're using sprites, how are you getting the perspective effect on all the tall elements? Oh, um, for the perspective, it, it, it's not actually intended to be a perspective effect. It's just a line of sight uh, effects. So basically, you, you kind of work the same way as the AI. You can't see through walls. Everything is in 2D. It just like it looks like 3D, but it's not 3Ds. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just from the perspective that since your the texture starts from the center and bleeds out, it makes it look like it's a 3D perspective. Yeah. yeah. Very, and it's very cool. It looks like that, but it's, it's kind of do it does. So I mean, yeah. it's it's not a bug; it's a feature, right? It's a feature, so it limits your line of sight. You can't like see through the entire level, like all, like like that. That would just expose everything, and it won't be fun. Also, I want I like players to you know kind of feel claustrophobic in some areas, and <laughs> you can have that. You know, you get idea. Absolutely. That's, yeah. very That's cool. cool. So they're not even really pillars. They're more just uh, textures kind of bleeding out onto the rest of the room. Right. Uh, so how does the perspective from a technical standpoint is basically your characters like shoot out like uh, I'll say hundreds of ray cast toward the uh, nearby walls and then create this areas. And then I use some shaders to like stencil out the, the black area and get the, the level texture shown. So that's, that's pretty neat. Thing. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, very cool. So uh, again, uh, do you plan on continuing to uh, work on this game outside of class or is it in a good state where you want it to basically call it for done? Can you talk about that for a little bit? Um, I will uh, work on this uh, project a little more, but I will not uh, so uh, I kind of want to find, as I make the levels and kind of finding the tone of the game, and I found that it's maybe more interesting to like do a, a zombie parody game. So instead of you have every level, the same setup, the same character, uh, the same abilities, yeah. and maybe like make a parody based on every other game <laughs> out there, or every other zombie game out there. Right. I like but, that. You switch the side. You're the zombie, and the other people, uh, the <laughs> humans, or your allies. Very cool. Um, so, uh, work again. Is this the game uh, available to play? Is it up on the website? Uh, right now, it's not on the website, but it will be tomorrow. So, Ooh, very cool. There from tomorrow. Awesome. Oh, definitely. Uh, again, everybody, look out for that. Uh, definitely on this game. Is there anything else you'd like to comment about this game or? Give any advice to future developers? Uh, well, I, I have something to say. So, absolutely. That I, when I make the game, uh, although I have the premise that I want to make a zombie versus human, but I don't really have a clear idea of what, how to make it fun. So I start off making all the you know, gameplay system, the AI and stuff. But uh, eventually, I end up end up not using all of them. So, like, I'll say for. Uh, programmers, especially when they are, they are able to do everything, and but without thinking of what a game design is, I start off with something tangible and don't build like a whole things and and like over engineer everything. Just like make small step and make good the game advice. fun. Very good advice. Yeah, you can't make uh, one or two mechanics fun. Adding a whole bunch of them is not going to make it even more fun. So. 
well done. Very, again, yeah, very well done. The, the game yeah. works absolutely great. Can't wait to play more of it. Um, yep. Awesome. So is there any else, other things you'd like to uh, comment on that? Otherwise, we'll be taking a short break here and then doing our next game. Yeah, just a last comment for me. It's just like, uh, pretty much just like the advice is just keep the scope small within the 20 weeks uh, that you have, um, but make it fun at the same time. <laughs> and, um, but just don't overstress and have fun while doing it. Absolutely. That's why we're making this stuff, right? All right. Very cool. Uh, well, again, thank you very much for showing Zomnoms. This game looks absolutely great. So. Uh, to those who are watching, again, this will be up on the website uh, with the, uh, hopefully by tomorrow, and you can download and play it. Uh, thank you, Christian, Jalen, uh, Jasmine, and Raymond. Again, thank you all. This is this game looks absolutely great. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. All right, well done. Uh, so this is Omnoms. Uh, we're going to take a short uh, five minute break, and then we will be doing our next game. Uh, uh, I'll interject real quick. We'll say about a ten minute break, so right, we'll sorry. be back at five forty. All right, 540. Uh, is there any other questions from the audience that uh, they'd like to talk about Zomnoms? Otherwise, we'll, uh, take a, we'll head out to a break. So let's see if we have any other questions. <laughs> Some people, is that a little crab I spy? I love that. All right, cool. All right, so we will take a short 10-minute break. We will come back about 540, and then we will start with the next game. The next game that is up on the plate will be uh, homing. So uh, tune back in in about 10 minutes. I'll see you guys there. Thank you, uh, thank you, Zomnons, for coming out.
All right, uh, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Capstone Showcase 2020. Uh, we've seen a lot of great games so far. I've been loving all these. Uh, again, I, just as again, I want to give a shout out to JD who's been helping me put this all together. So again, uh, if you're a developer in a student developer in Chicago and like to learn more, uh, follow them here on their Twitch page and again uh, reach out to their website. So if you're looking. Uh, to build games or working to meet all the people in that scene, come on out. We have a lot of great people. That being said, let's look at our next game called Homing. So I am going to first play their uh, Homing video. So let's check it out. All right. Dear Sarah, it's been a while. I thought you might like to know what's been going on. Summer's just around the corner and I'm facing a busy work season. Miraculously, there's a whole weekend that I didn't get booked. It coincides right with the end of school, so I'm taking Jacob to Disney World. You would have loved how his face lit up when I told him. Sometimes I wonder if I'm neurotic, sending Sandwich off to deliver letters without knowing if they'll ever reach you. Oh yeah, I named the pigeon finally. Or rather, Jacob named her. Sandwich. After her favorite food. I almost didn't let that be her name, but I've grown to like it. Springfield is the same as always. The stop sign at Maple and Main hasn't been replaced, and the old warehouse behind Jenny's is still vacant. It's been years. Sometimes it feels like time just doesn't pass. I know it does. You're gone, and I miss you less every day. But this little city, well, she doesn't change. I never got to live in the suburbs with you. It was my biggest dream, but you left, moved out before I could convince you that Jacob deserved to have a house and a backyard. That I did, too. We could have had a dog, and two cars, and a full kitchen. Imagine having an actual dishwasher. Never hearing me complain about hand-washing dishes ever again. Having a guest room so our friends wouldn't have to sleep out on the couch. A playroom just for Jacob. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. We could have had so much more. Is it inappropriate to fill you in on my dating life? Well, I'm seeing someone, sort of. She was a bridesmaid at a wedding I organized, believe it or not. That's how I met her. She adores Jacob. I haven't seen much of her though, because she's busy and I'm busy and I'm scared. I told her about you though. She says you sounded like an incredible wife and an incredibly frustrating wife. <laughs> I laughed at that. She's right, you know. You were an incredible wife. I loved you so much and I wish I had known how to love you better. I'm writing, well, I'm writing to say how much I miss you, I guess. Things are hard, and there have been so many times when I want to reach for my phone and call you, invite you back home, and stay in your arms forever. I'm sorry for being so sentimental. Some days go by without me thinking about you at all, but other days, like today, my mind can't stop. I wonder if we were wrong, if I made a mistake in driving you away. I don't know. I try not to regret it. 
I'll come visit you someday. I promise. Jacob keeps asking, and I can't put him off for too much longer. I just needed some time. Needed a lot of time. I hope this letter finds you. I will always love you and remember you fondly. Nina. Okay. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Okay, so I didn't plan on feeling this much today, but whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, sorry. So uh, please introduce yourself and tell us about Homie. So my name is Michelle Liga. Um, I just got my Master's of Fine Arts, the MFA in Game Design from DePaul, and this was my thesis game. So... Um, I, my background is not in games at all. I got my undergrad in English and gender studies. So sort of a big pivot to learning how to make a game once I started the master's program. Uh, wow, uh, you've done amazingly well. So again, uh, just gonna give comments all around. So love the visuals, sound is great. The story, you again, you had me hooked from about, about 10 seconds in. I wanted to hear the whole thing. Whoa, well done, well done. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, I just want to point out that the music is done by another um, Esther's student, Jess Class. Uh, she, she's in the second year of the program right now. Um, she did the music and it's, I mean, it's very beautiful and she did a great job of it. I mean, yeah, so kudos to you and your whole team. This is absolutely amazing. So, wow. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, catch myself here. Uh, yeah, a lot of feels on that. So, uh, uh, What's, so what inspired you to make a game like this? It seems like, again, very heavy narrative, which is great, but something we can all relate to. Yeah, so this game started um, about a year ago is when I started the thesis process. And I sort of had this theme, originally it started with, I just wanted to make a game about pigeons um, <laughs> because I love pigeons and I think they often right. get a bad rap because people think they're like dirty rats, which is, um, I also love rats, uh, but I love the idea, you know, pigeons are this, these animals that we've sort of forced to live our way of being, and then yeah. we've like, you know, integrated them. Anyway, so I was like, I'll make a game about pigeons. And then I went through a whole process of like, what can I do with pigeons? Um, and then I started reading more and more about, you know, messenger pig pigeons and yeah. how they have their, the sense of like, how they know where to deliver letters to. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I uh, remember that. So, as, uh, again, I grew up in Ohio, and one of the last, uh, is it Carrier Pigeons, I think, I remember, was at the Cincinnati Zoo. I remember they would do oh talks, of, talks about that as well. Again, yeah, their sense of direction, and just, again, it's, they always trot to the instinct, but that's kind of hard to even quantify, but it's absolutely amazing. But, uh, yeah, yeah, game about pigeons, and then in terms of, it uh, seems like a game about eventually relationships, which we can all uh, relate to. Very well done. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that, that was a big thing. Oh, sorry, no, you go. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to uh, say about the narrative that, um, I mean, one of my big focuses is narrative design in general, mm -hmm. um, and specifically uh, dialogue and also narratives about, like, complex emotions and the human experience. Absolutely. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I was not writing a trope um, that I wasn't writing something that was pretty generic. Um, so I wanted it to be something that you don't hear about often. And, right. you know, that was, I was thinking what would happen if your spouse who you, you know, your ex-spouse, or right. in this case, your ex-wife, passed away. Yeah. Um, and what emotions does that bring up? Absolutely. It's, it's a tough subject, but again, games is a great medium to actually go through that. Absolutely amazing. Um, so again, what were some of the big, biggest difficulties creating this project? I mean, the game looks beautiful. Thank you. That actually, so when I started um, a year ago, I knew very, very little about how to do any of this. <laughs> um, I knew very basic Unity programming. I hadn't really ever made a 3D game in Unity before. I hadn't done any 3D modeling or animation. Um, so I had to learn all of that. Uh, which was a lot of fun, but also very challenging. There's Absolutely. a lot of um, 
trial and error, a lot, a lot of struggling and pulling my hair out and being frustrated when things didn't go right. Um, and even still, you know, I'm like, there's still so many little bugs and flaws and glitches that I just have to accept because, oh, you know, it's at a certain reason, point. Though, You've done very well because I'm not seeing them in the trailer here and they, the game looks absolutely beautiful. So Thank you. Yeah, I, that's the one thing that I, the art design wasn't, I mean, it was a little bit intentional. I knew I wanted these hues of, you know, purple and pink and blue, but I honestly, what I, <laughs> When I started to make this game in Unity, I discovered the fog um, setting in the in the light <laughs> the lighting uh, setting, and right. I just turned that on, and I was like, "Wow!" Oh yeah, there's a lot everything. of little hidden things there, like all the post processing, the HDRP that's now yeah. coming around, a whole bunch of cool stuff. So, well done. I mean, uh, wow. So, uh, again, anything else you'd like to comment about this game? So, there's a whole bunch of stuff I'd love to delve into. But uh, real quick, we have a question from the chat. Yes. So somebody was asking, uh, do you plan on trying to ever add maybe some conflict or something to the game to make it more difficult for the player? Or do you want to keep it more just kind of this nice experience? Uh, what, what are your kind of end goals with the game? So the, the point of the whole game was to just tell a story. Um, that's sort of all the games I make, I just want to tell a story. Um, I like that. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm not a big fan of games that are, I mean, violent conflict. Sure. You know, not a big fan of, but conflict in general, I think is, I think a lot of people have the idea that stories absolutely need some sort of big conflict in order to be compelling. Um, but I don't agree with that. I think that as stories, as long as they're about some sort of emotion or human experience, that they can be interesting. Um, so I think, and as it stands now, I mean, thank you. There are ways I could develop out the game more. Um, but as it stands now, it's, it's, it's essentially a walking simulator, so I call it. It's a walking simulator, except you're flying. Um, so the, the space for conflict, um, I think, would make it a different game. Absolutely. Sure, absolutely. This is... <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so a lot of great comments here. It seems like a lot of people love the look of this game. Uh, again, all the feels as well. So well done. Uh, so again, the, is the game uh, eventually still in the process, or is it uh, wrapping up? So you're a th uh, basically a master student here. So what do you continue, you know, do you plan on continuing working on this? I have been going back and forth about that um, because I, so I finished this game in March um, and at first I was like, okay, I'm done with this game, I'm moving on. Like I'm not gonna do anything else, sure. else with it. I got my master's degree, that's it. Um, but, <laughs> you know, every time I think about it, one of my friends um, who's, who's a first year in the master's program, he suggested to me that I think about doing a Kickstarter um, to, to sort of that way I could build out the game more I could hire an actual 3d artist um, <laughs> and there and a programmer there's a lot of things that I wanted to do with this game that it just sure. wasn't able to do because of the limitations of my experience um, so it would be cool to do that but it's right now I'm, I've just wanted to take a little bit of a break oh, uh, from working on it so absolutely. intensely absolutely but yeah again I kind of like the story narrative too I do agree with you again it's not always had to be about conflict the over so but getting if you get a good story out of it and some sort of positive or effectively moving experience i think you've made a great game and it seems like you did that again with the eventually just this trailer here it looks absolutely great thank you awesome uh do we have any other questions from the chat uh oh yeah did you make this in what was i think you said it was made in unity correct yeah i made it in unity um 3d modeling was in blender very cool uh, is the player actually controlling the pigeon, or is this more of like a thematic type thing? Like, so cinematic, sorry. Yeah, so that was the thing. Um, when I, one of my goals in making this game was I wanted to make a game that was, that anyone could play. Um, sure. I mean, I was specifically thinking a game that my parents could play. So <laughs> this game, I mean, you are controlling the pigeon. Um, so you control basically left and right, and then you can control the camera with either the mouse or, you know, it's, uh, I also programmed it for PlayStation 4 controller. Um, but the game will also play itself completely from start to finish. So the pigeon is always going forward, and that um, is in line with the idea that, you know, pigeons have this inherent sense of direction. I like that. So if you steer the pigeon off the main line that it's traveling, and then you let go of the steering, it'll it'll go back towards the main line. Um, so as soon as the game starts, it 
the pigeon starts flying and you can you don't even have to touch a controller and the game will play through um, but the, the gameplay part of the game is that there are specific areas of the city um, and you'll see them because it's the the blue buildings yeah. that if you fly over them it'll give you a different snippet of the letter of the narrative oh, and if you were to okay. just like yeah and i know it's not it's it's a little unclear just from the gameplay video itself no, but the, the story um, itself wrapped me up really quick uh, we had another question saying, it's like, what was your inspiration behind the Fetley and the Byron's in color? Which is absolutely great. That uh, that was the first thing that uh, basically grabbed me. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, there are a lot of, I, I love this color scheme for a lot of reasons. Um, the, one of the biggest things about this game was to make it a queer story about queer women. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's a lot of the, the bisexual coloring renaissance is a, is a thing that mm. I had been seeing a lot about. Um, oh, so I wanted to yeah, use those colors. Sense. Yeah, um, and then also it's at least vaguely inspired by the game Sayonara Wild Hearts, which came out last year and which is an amazing game. And the, oh, that color look. scheme has got the pinks and the purples. I like um, it. It fits very well. It fits with the theme, too. Thank you. Very it's... well done. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the same comments say I'm really a sucker for these color schemes. So very well, yes. very well done. Yes. Uh, any other questions from the chat? So, again, I love, love the pigeon stuff. But, yeah, I remember... Uh, uh, going to the zoo then to talk about the carrier pigeons it was pretty cool yeah. <laughs> one comment was uh, it helps that the bi pride color scheme makes everything look really good <laughs> it does <laughs> that's very true i mean that's the other thing is i'm not like color theory is not a thing that i'm an expert in but i do know oh it's de yeah that... it's definitely a thing <laughs> <laughs> These colors are already chosen that they look good together, so oh, I don't absolutely. even have to think about it. Oh, it looks absolutely great. I love I love this game. It looks absolutely great. Uh, one, question, so one question that we got was, uh, if you had kind of your dream budget or, the, <laughs> or infinite time to keep working on it, are there any features or things that you'd like to do or add to the game? Or is it kind of in a state you're happy with? Oh, man. If I had my dream budget, <laughs> it would be huge. You would be able to fly over a whole fully built out city. Um, you'd be able to fly up and down as well as left to right. And Multiple. the narrative, the way, I mean, I, you know, I'd hire a 3D artist, I'd hire a camera, I'd be able to get it so that right. you could fly over any part of the city at any point um, and you're not just flying in one direction. I would build out the narrative. Um, there was stories. a point like when I first, yeah, I mean, that that's the other thing. When I first started this game, it was gonna be a game about a pigeon just delivering letters from one you know, one person to, an, or different yeah. people in a city to each other. And as the pigeon, you could like, you know, deliver the wrong letter to the wrong person. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it would be cool in this theme to be able to have different letters and different stories. Uh, someone suggested they would like to have uh, custom pigeon skins that they can get. They can <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> there are different colored pigeons. I That's would love awesome. to do that. Oh man, yeah, you, there are a lot of potential for this. Yeah, uh, again, the whole delivering narrative through a messenger Pigeon is an absolutely great idea. I love that idea. That was a very cool idea. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, it is weird to look at this game and think that, like, you know, I'm like, oh, I made this game. And then I look at it, I'm like, I mean, it's just a game. It's just a game <laughs> I wrote some words for. Sure. Um. <laughs> but uh, again, we all have those but, things. Like, uh, any developer you've asked is like, once you work on a game long enough, on your own game long enough, you end up getting to the point where you're. I really love it, I really hate it, or go back to really love it. But again, it's all about the user end experience. And it sounds, again, from just the comments here, a lot of people love it. Oh, and yeah, that's great. Question. Oh, I'm so happy. You got the question, when are you going to pitch this to Apple Arcade? <laughs> <laughs> I see that's from Dave. Dave is my friend who I told you about who suggested <laughs> yes. I do a Kickstarter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, you know, if Apple Arcade wants to offer... Yeah. Um, <laughs> to work on the game with me. Well, you have a great concept for t uh, delivering stories, which I think is a great way of uh, getting a great potential where this game could go. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it would be very cool to release this game on a more official and polished level. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great comments coming from this. So let's again, very very cool game. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to comment or uh, any advice for like future developers you'd like to give? You're a master student now. Congrats. <laughs> A master student now. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, the biggest advice I have that I learned making this game is to ask for help. Um, I think <laughs> I had this sort of idea that this is my thesis and I have to make it all by myself. 
And if I have too many people help me, then it's no longer my thesis. And that's a big lie. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and the other thing is the more people that have a hand in your work or your, I mean, in this case, your game, the better the game's going to be because it, you know, other people have other perspectives on things. So I had, I, I mean, I had so many people help me on this game and there were times like the Charlie who did the voiceover up until like three weeks before my, this game was due, I didn't have a, voiceover, a voice actor, I was just going to do the voice myself. And then um, Caleb, my professor at the time, they were like, you should consider getting like trying to find an actual voice actor. And I reached out to my friend who was an actor and I asked him if he knew anyone. And right away he was like, yeah, you know, I know someone, Charlie, she's a great voice actor. She can do the voice for your game. Um, and that like elevated it to a whole nother level. Yeah, they do a good job. My brother does voice acting as well. So it, it helps. And yeah, yeah. They, it, it, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are loving it. So, uh, again, what are we looking on time, Grayson? We're ready to bring in the next person. All right, cool. Uh, so, again, uh, thank you, uh, Michelle, is it? Thank you. Uh, yes. yes. Michelle, <laughs> right thank you very much, Michelle. This game looks absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, is, this, is this game able to be downloaded on the website, or do you have a place where people can go check it out? Yeah, so it's on the website. It's also on itch. And if you, I, um, if you on itch.io, there's the bundle for racial justice, and homing is in that bundle as well. So I awesome. suggest that if you want to play it, you should purchase that and get it that way. Sounds sounds uh, sounds good to me. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, all that information will be up. Well done. Uh, thank you very thank much, you so much, Michelle, for joining us. Thank you. I'm so glad I was able to show my game. Absolutely, it's great. I love it. <laughs> All right, so let's, okay, so next game that is on board, on deck, which will be Beneath the Noise. Or is Beneath the Nose? Noise. Beneath the Noise. I think I... All right, chat, you're messing with me. I think it's beneath the noise. All right. Um, hello, do we got... Uh, Devin, do we have you in here? Yes, I am here. Awesome. All right, so... Uh, is this a uh, playthrough? So, okay, uh, tell us, Devin, again, tell us about your game, Beneath the Noise. Sure. Um, so this game was, uh, it's just a bitsy game, of course. Uh, it's kind of a prototype. Uh, the idea behind it is that I was living in. Uh, oh, that might be the Twitch uh, reverbing on you. Yeah. For sure. If you have the stream in the background, if you just mute the Twitch stream, you should be all set. Yeah. That works. Wonderful. Oh, perfect. Uh, so um no no worries um so yeah the the idea behind it was that i was living in an apartment that was very noisy and i was just kind of imagining some of my neighbors and uh placing you know these vague perceptions of them behind a, a broader narrative and uh yeah it sort of morphed into this and i think i'll just kind of let it go for now very cool yeah let's let's let it run run through
Uh, yeah, I did actually. I tried to time them out so that some of the dialogue would uh, match up. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. Okay, wow, well done, Devin. Thank you. Very cool. So, well, okay, so a lot of things going on in this game. So, uh, so tell me about that. What's the, again, uh, it has a lot of thematic parts to it. Again, even the music itself I'd love to know more about. So, what can you tell me about this game? What's the inspiration behind it? For sure. Um, well, it, it kind of built out of, uh, you know, the process of making it. It was originally for a... Um, uh, a uh, bitsy game jam 
Um, <laughs> and my skill sets as a developer are basically, um, yeah, as a composer, uh, sound designer, and, and a narrative designer. Um, so just kind of working off of those. Bitsy is a really convenient platform uh, for the music using those was all kinds you? Of... That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, well um, done, have... well done. Thank you, I appreciate it. My my uh, previous uh, master's degree was uh, in a classical, it was, was in a uh, composition, music composition. So it shows, um, that's very impressive. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, since a lot of my focus is around music, I try to develop narratives that incorporate it somehow. So, I mean, two of the characters that the rats are observing through the pipes mm -hmm. are both musicians. And uh, so, like, the, the idea that, like, you kind of exist, you know, in a space just based off of the sounds that you hear um, and, uh, you know, what kinds of stories you can piece together based off of, uh, you know, the discontextualized sound, the sounds of people having conversations in the apartment above you, the sounds of them practicing their instruments and those kinds of things. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. I like that. Very cool. Thank you. So what was the... Ah, oh, man. So, yeah, the music is very, uh, very good on this. Yeah, it really sells what the, uh, it really sells the theme of this game. So, what was the, some of the most difficult parts about this game for you, uh, making it? So uh, probably the, 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 oh, sorry? Sorry, uh, big challenges. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I suppose working within the affordances of Bitsy, really, because, um, <laughs> Uh, I was trying to think about like how it can have kind of a logical pathway that follows the narrative. Um, and the thing about Bitsy is it tends to force you uh, into a, a bit of a pigeonhole in terms of like how that uh, is allowed to go. And I, I do like sure. being able to create multiple iterations of rooms and, and changing them up and then right. allowing them to develop that way. Uh, so just trying to keep the pathway straightforward using uh, that program was probably the more difficult part. I think I think probably the other difficult part is just uh, trying to keep my dialogue uh, within the parameters of the text box, um, yeah. which oftentimes I did not do very well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's certainly something that uh, in the future I would um, like to improve upon. I mean, very well done. Yeah, it's, again, the... Uh... I mean, yeah, I know you said a bitsy, but the, you did a great job selling it. Again, I get the theme, I get the uh, story, and the music. And again, as soon as I heard that, that sold me. It was very well done. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's kind of what I spend a lot of my time. Uh, well, <laughs> so I'm a first year uh, MFA grad student. Um, and uh, pretty much I'm just trying to be a valuable uh, composer and uh, narrative designer for a team. And I'm thank kind you. of continuing to work there, on that. I think you're definitely there. That was very well done. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so again, uh, is this uh, where do you plan on taking this game? Is there gonna, uh, is it effectively where right where you uh, right where you want it, or do you want to add uh, more to it? Or um, do you keep working on this after this. Right. I I like the idea of it being represented uh, with more you know graphical interest. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't hate the aesthetics of Bitsy, but I, I do find them quite limiting. Um, and so, like, someday having the chance to work with uh, oh. artists and, and So do you say, like, at one point you might want to make this, like, a 3D version of this or maybe <laughs> uh, Sprite? Again, just curious because, again, I uh, uh, love the theme and I love the music. I mean, realistically, probably not, but that would be <laughs> sort of dope. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. Very well done. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about this or any advice for future developers, just including, like, again, you're a sound composer. We, if we have any sound people in the chat, they'd probably love to hear some advice from you. Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of, like, the composition and the sound design, like, I feel like a lot of games tend to throw those on top of an existing game, and then it, do and it doesn't mm -hmm. always feel very well integrated. I think that if you include sound, especially music, uh, in some kind of integration into the concept, it can really help uh, make your game more impactful emotionally. Oh yeah, it's always a shame. Uh, again, the sound, uh, a lot of projects push that to the end where, again, if, it, if the sound's not there, it's the whole game could fall apart really quickly. I've seen before. Play some right. of the games that you've uh, really had emotional attachment to growing up and now play it that when it's on mute. Uh, it's yeah. a whole different experience. Absolutely. But well done. Uh, great job. Uh, 
love to. I can't wait to see more uh, more what comes of you, especially the music part. Love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, uh, I'm gonna see if we have any questions. Yeah, so uh, one person again, they're really excited. They love to see a game that's in through the eyes of an audio designer, which I absolutely agree. It's it's a different take, different feel, which I do love. Very well done. Uh, so uh, Grayson is our next team up the bat. The rest of our teams are actually just going to let the video talk for them, and uh, we'll just be able to discuss the sure. videos that we can watch. Perfect. Uh, so, Devin, any final uh, comments you want to put out there? Absolutely none. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> well done, Devin. This game looks absolutely great beneath the noise. Uh, is it up on the website so people can download and try it? Yep. All right, awesome. So those out there, if you want to uh, pull this down, it's up on the Capstone website. Take a look. This game looks absolutely great. All right, perfect. Awesome. All right, so you said the next one's it's I'm playing a video. Yep, so we have three games left, and we will not have anybody speaking for them in person, so we just have the videos, and uh, I guess we can kind of talk about them afterwards if you'd like. Dope. All right, well, let's bring in the chat. So chat, help me out with this. Let's discuss some of these games coming up. Yep, next one I think should be Project Torn. And it is. Project Torn is up next. Uh, sadly, I again, I'm not sure who was involved in this. I didn't have a list on that. Uh, maybe you can pull it up and we'll give a shout out to the members on there. Maybe it's on the website. Oh, actually, give me just a sec. I bet I can find it out because I've got the website up. Sure. Uh, I'll play the trailer and then we'll give a shout out to those who worked on it. Sounds good. just the trailer but again not much gameplay footage which is fine but uh very definitely caught me with the music and the theme definitely like that yeah it was, it was really cool uh it looks like this is zach page's game yes. i think i'm saying that last name right yes so it looks yep. like this is a game coming up very cool so very cool yep again very, all right uh, okay, so from it looks like it's uh, interactive fiction worked in Twine. So it's a Twine-based game. Oh, very cool. Again. All right, so perfect. So hopefully... Oh, it's a Twine-based game. Okay. All right. Now yep, I'm and it to... looks like it actually runs straight off of the uh, page linked on the Capstone website that we were looking at. It takes you straight to the itch page, and you can run it right off there. Oh, very cool. Okay. So those are out there. Again, uh, definitely take a look. And again... Uh, I'll play through it uh, tomorrow. So we'll, again, I'll play through that tomorrow. So yeah, like it says. Uh, yeah, it says that on the itch that their uh, project Torn is a choice-based text adventure set in the distant future. Magic has been outlawed by the government, and security forces have been installed to monitor citizens. Marcus has lived carefully to avoid the watchful gaze of those who intend to persecute him. However, while walking home one night, he is faced with a dilemma that will change the. Co his Blech. change the course of his life forever will he accept his destiny or continue his mundane life of safety and fear this is a chapter one in a hopefully five or so five or so chapter series each chapter will build on the previous ones seeing as this one took me six months to create the rest are probably going to be a little similar if not shorter uh, i hope you enjoy it and please if you have any feedback uh he'll read the comments on the itch page and make updates as needed very cool all right, well, I'm going to try it out uh, later tonight. 
and I'll get uh, talk about some more tomorrow. But very cool, twenty eight page game. And again, I like the theme. I like the story. That caught me pretty quickly. I like that. Very cool. All right, let's look at the next one. So very yep. well and I linked that. the website again in the chat for anybody who wants to go and f click on the game uh, among the list of other projects. So next game is up is uh, Biogenesis. I think I pronounced it correctly. So let's take a look. A Biogenesis. Oh, next. real quick. Hold on. Oh, sure. We have a question. Sorry. Uh, actually, we may have a team to come and talk. Oh, about a Biogenesis? Beautiful. Let's bring them on. <laughs> Alberto and Zoe, are you there? Yep. Yeah, hello there. Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. I might, I might have a um, a uh, an echo because of my microphone, so I apologize about oh, that. Oh, no worries. You sound good on my end. So, uh, let's play the trailer, and then you can tell us about this game. Okay. Cool. So, again, uh, Alberto and Zoe, tell me about this game. So, very cool looking. Love it. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, go ahead, Alberto. Yeah, so, uh, basically, uh, the main idea of this game was, um, so, uh, basically, uh, you're like a deep space explorer who uh, crash lands on a planet, and, um, uh, using clues around your environment, you're able to figure out that you're actually in the center of the universe. Mm. Um, and you figure this out because uh, once you crash land your ship, there's actually, um, well, there's supposed to be uh, an incoming sandstorm in the distance, which would uh, force you to go inside the cave. And uh, yeah, you would eventually find um, like clues of your past self being there. And uh, when you reach the other side, as you can see, uh, your spaceship is like no longer uh, the way that you left it in. It's actually underneath the sand, and it's like all rusted up. But um, yeah, bas that's basically the main idea of the game. Um, very cool. Uh, I'm yeah, getting, we didn't uh, really get to that. I'm getting, uh, as the, one of the comments, I'm getting a very No Man's Sky type feel to it. Is that uh, some yeah. of the inspiration behind this? So it actually wasn't uh, <laughs> one of our inspirations, sure. but that's that's the that's like the main thing that everyone notices about this game is that it really does look kind of like No Man's Sky. It's not a problem again. I, again, I love the space theme. So again, again, sucker for space games too. Mass Effect was one of my favorite games growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, well done. So um, again, talk about uh, some of the again design or art behind this or in the programming. So I'd love to hear more. Tell us about the development of this game. What were some big challenges for it? One uh, challenge was getting the walking to work. <laughs> yeah. Animation's yeah. always fun to deal with, right? <laughs> oh my god, because I 
spent weeks trying to figure out how to get it so it wasn't jittering, only to find out that it was because I had update instead of fixed update. Oh, oh I should have picked that earlier. I could have told you that. Yeah, that, that was, yeah. That was the whole, not fixed everything. Yep. Uh, def- like, you if you're, me? depending on how your character's moving, whether it's moving by. Uh, yeah, we're using LARP. So. Yeah. yeah, if you're using LARP and if it's yeah, we're using LARP, you're so. using rigid body movement, yep, that would have been it. <laughs> Uh, it's always those fun little uh, little uh, bugs here and there. I I know them all too well. Small little fix, but it takes it spends weeks trying to fix it. Yeah, I, I spent weeks trying to fix it, and all of a sudden I'm like I'm like googling like how do I fix it? And like trying <laughs> trying to fix the update, and I put it down. It worked. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, we've all been there. So yes, this is uh, someone said this is Unity. So yeah, I know that uh, those bugs all too well. Very well done. Uh, again, so uh, uh, can you tell us more, again, maybe about the art style there? So uh, if it wasn't No Man's Sky, what was some of the other big inspirations that you're pulling from? So um, the original idea for this game was that it was supposed to be like a very uh, artistic game. So it's okay. it's not really like uh, something that you're, uh, you know, trying to figure out in like a short amount of time. It's something that you're supposed to just walk through and take your time. And, so, like, you know, like narrative through, through environment. Yeah, exactly. And uh, one of the biggest inspirations we had for this game was uh, Journey. Oh, good game. Um, we really like how. Um, oh, did I cut off? Sorry. Oh no, you're good. No, uh, okay. Journey, great game. Love that game. Yeah, uh, we really like how. Um, uh, it, it encourages the player to basically figure out everything on their own. Right. Um, another one was, I believe it was uh, Astro Near. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I met the actual crew of Astro Near. Uh, great team. Uh, oh, they, nice. uh, yeah, and they're, again, love that game as well. Um, yeah, our, our color palette is actually uh, yeah. very based on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, after you said that, uh, yeah, I'd make, uh, I could definitely see the connection now. Yeah. Uh, very well done. Uh, yeah, and our um, our three D modeler for our team actually could it be on come come talk um, said that he was inspired for the astronaut um, by a character from the game Risk of Rain too. Oh, Risk of Rain. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yep. Risking yeah, Risk and, of Rain is also a great game. Yeah, and if it's Spaceship Destiny Two, Star Citizen, <laughs> the longest sci fi concept art, he said were very big inspirations. And for Cave, it was basically just we just took inspiration from nature. Absolutely. Um, so, anything else you want to tell about developing this game, or uh, where you plan on taking it? Um, we plan well, on working we did... on it over the summer. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, over the summer. Yeah, we're planning on continuing work on it because we have grand ideas. That's why our team is called Team Galaxy. Our ideas range as far as as the galaxy can go. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, again, uh, uh, is, there, is this game available for, for download they can actually play around and explore? Not right now. Okay, so at some point it will be pushed up and people can actually download and play it. Yes, of course. Uh, think of this as the announcement trailer of sorts. Uh, absolutely. Again, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely excited to, and as the audience as well, I'm de- uh, definitely excited to see where this goes and definitely when we can play it. That is awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I'm loving, yeah, I kind of like the uh, narrative by environment. So, like, uh, Witness, I definitely love that game. It was also similar to the idea. But uh, very well done. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about this game or any advice for future developers? Always uh, use, make sure you know what update you're using in your walk <laughs> site for your walk animations. <laughs> Read the fine print, right? <laughs> exactly. If you're using LERP, it's fixed update. Otherwise, it's just update. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Uh, is there any uh, questions from the crowd? So, yeah, Unity. Uh, actually, I've went through most of them. Perfect. Uh, is there anything else you guys like to say? Uh, I think we're good on our end. Yeah, right, I think cool. we are. Well, well done. Uh, the game looks great. Uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. And uh, please keep us posted when it actually gets to uh, when we when it actually gets a drop that we can play. You definitely will. Awesome. Well done. We got a quick question of uh, if there's a place anybody can get the game. Uh, as... Not yet. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Alberto. No, I was just going to say not yet, but we uh, we were planning on hopefully posting it like uh, maybe during the summer. 
Yeah, coming soon during coming soon in <laughs> summer 2020. There you go. So hopefully it will be again. Look in the summer. It will be up on the website uh, that you can basically download and play. Awesome. Very well done. Can't wait to see more of this, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks there for having you. us. Thank you for coming out. Awesome. All right, let's see the next group. So do we have a team for this one, Grayson, or are we watching the trailer for this? I believe we are just watching the trailer. The person who made the next game is... Sorry, let me see. Maxwell Brady? Maxwell Brady. Okay, and I'm going to pronounce it uh, a sling. A sling? Or am I being pronounced that? Eiling? A yeah. I uh, yeah. Please forgive me on the pronunciation. It's not my strongest suit. But... This looks great, so let's see the next one. I imagine you have heard tales of fairies, of their courts and desires. Tons of stories, all set in the ancient past. But did anyone tell you why no one sees fairies now? A long time ago, people started to doubt the power of the good people. We built our great enterprises ever larger and started to drive them to exile. The fairies chose to leave the waking world and entered a dream. Not just any dream, mind you. One of a giant tree. The king of the good people called their new home the Isley. They were safe there, but dreams are not fulfilling so there the fairies their gods and their monsters wait all starving why does no one see the fairies anymore people do see them anyone who died in their sleep saw them for the residents of the isling eat existence leaving behind untouched corpses. And should someone return from this dream? I can't help but wonder how much they would leave behind to do so. Okay. Interesting. All right. Okay. Caught my eye. Very cool. Very cool. And, uh, According to several people that have been messaging me oh, and criticizing I, 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 me, it, it is wrong, Isling. We? we said it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, all right, we butchered the name. We apologize. So, Is, Isling? Is that? Isling, yeah. Isling. Okay, I will get it right yep. next time. A tabletop role playing <laughs> game. Oh, no way. That's so cool. Whoa, love tabletop. Again, do Yeah, so that was their little stuff. teaser trailer. Uh, kind of set up to get us geared up and ready for it. Um, oh, so... It's a tabletop RPG-centered Celtic mythology is what Anna said in the chat. Oh, awesome. Okay, I can't wait to see more about this. So hopefully yep. uh, information where to play will be up on the website, but that is very cool. Love yep, tabletop it looks like RPGs. they have an itch.io, which is linked to the website we've been linking in the chat. And it says, this, is, this RPG is intended to be for shorter sessions to be played in a small group, one game master, and two to four players. Uh, the major themes include Celtic mythology and a loss of self to the a loss of self to the fairies. Very cool. So and there's a downloadable PDF so that you can try it out along with this trailer we just watched. And again, if any with quarantine out right now, this is definitely time to do some tabletop. I've been doing that plenty of times, uh, plenty of times uh, during the weekend when I can. So absolutely. Very cool. Better time than ever. Absolutely. And I also added in the chat, it's about dream journeys, uh, interacting with the fairy and meeting living gods. All right. That def okay. Wow. All right. Oh, uh, could you link the uh, the page one more time? I think the page is on the Twitch, but you can link that one. It is, uh, it is on that, but I can also, here is the actual itch.io link. Oh, yeah. Tabletop is a big thing. So, yeah, I have a D&D &D that I do on the weekends. It's, uh, again... Right now, quarantine works very well. So, uh, any which, but uh, can't wait to actually read about it. So, I'm definitely going to be reading up on that one. So, yeah, this sounds like a lot of fun. I got to try it out. All right. So, uh, that 
concludes all our games for today. Uh, we have another one going on tomorrow starting at the same time. Uh, we have uh, several more games to go through. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, came out today to show their games. All of them look absolutely amazing. I was very pleasantly surprised. This was absolutely a joy to actually go through all of them. I thank everybody for coming out to the show. This looks great. Can't wait to see more of it. Uh, again, one, I want to get a fun final shout out to the JDE that's been running all this. So it's not me doing all the work. I have a lot of people that's been helping a, 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 a great amount of work with this. So I'd like to thank Grayson, Eric, and Kaylee. You guys have done a great job for helping me set this up. Absolutely great. Thank you so much for that. And again, uh, if you're a developer out there who's a new student and would like to get into the game development community, uh, follow the JDE link down below. Follow this Twitch uh, channel. You can basically find out more about us and actually how to get involved. Further, I will be doing Unreal workshops uh, hosted by the JDE over the summer. So if you'd like to learn Unreal Engine, I'm going to show you how to do it. Very cool. All right. Uh, is there anything else I need to announce, Grayson, besides tomorrow? Uh, I think you've covered everything. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for anybody that wants to join and see the second half. Um, awesome. Well, thank you very much. we should much. be all set. Thank you very much, everybody, this evening. I will see you guys tomorrow. And uh, stay safe and stay happy. Yep. Thanks, everyone.